Thanks, Brian. We're pleased to announce today that we've reached agreement on a two-year contract, contract extension with Matt Carpenter, plus a vesting option for a third year. As you all know, he's been an excellent player for the Cardinals, a great teammate uh, since he became a regular in 2012. He's willingly played multiple positions, coming up as a third baseman, moved to second for a season or so, uh, played first, and now he's back to his original position at third base. Uh, he's just been a, a, a great uh, asset for our managers who have moved him all around. Uh, no question, but he's been a big part of the winning seasons. Uh, we've had winning seasons every year he's been with us, and we look forward to that in the future. So congratulations to Matt. We're excited to have him with us for at least the next two years and hopefully a third. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. So I'd like to begin by, by, by saying that, that back at, at the winter meetings, I ran into Matt's agent, Brian Cahill, and we just had a very short and brief conversation, but I had mentioned that maybe we should look at, at considering doing an extension for Mr. Carpenter. And that conversation happened. And then it led us to early February where we, we met again. We, we touched on the topic. And then uh, as spring training came to conclusion, we decided we'd roll up our sleeves and try to get this done. And, you know, a lot had transpired between opening of spring training to opening season with, with other extensions that were being done. And the, the key to this, though, is, and, and Bill touched on it, when you think back to, to Carp's career with the Cardinals, we've always won. And... There's sort of two things that I think all of us need to remember is he's created an enormous flexibility for the Cardinals because he was always willing to, to play a different position to allow us to maximize our, our team. And I think really what it says is he's truly a team player. And so the reason we were, were, were motivated to try to do this is because where he's at in his career, we wanted him to continue to, to wear the Cardinal uniform. He takes such great pride in the city of St. Louis. You think about Carp and his wife, McKenzie, and how much, how active they are in the city of St. Louis. It really was something that, that we felt like if we could find a way to have a meeting of the minds, it would make sense, and, and we were able to do that. And so, you know, as we look to the future, clearly we have a lot of players now signed and under control, but... As, as Carp sent me a text about two weeks ago or a week and a half ago about, this is a good team. We have a, a, a lot of good energy on this club, and, and under Mike Schultz's leadership, we really feel like we're in a good spot. So it really screamed like we had to get this done. And uh, thankfully, uh, um, we were able to. Brian Cahill, my staff, we worked together, and, and we're, we're pleased to, to be able to make this announcement today. So, Brian, Matt, thank you, and... Uh, Let's go on and have a great season, though. All right. Uh, obviously, um, you know, I, I can't uh, put into words um, the gratitude that I'm, I'm feeling right now. I, I want to personally thank Mr. DeWitt and Mo, Mr. Gersh, um, uh, my agent, Brian, for just making this possible, um, you know, taking a chance on a, a fifth-year senior at a TCU in 2009, um, you know, to be here today and potentially have an opportunity to wear the same uniform, one that I admire and treasure um, for an entire career uh, is quite a thrill. And uh, my wife and, and my family are, are extremely grateful and um, just f couldn't feel more blessed to um, – to be able to, to play in, in such a great city like St. Louis for the best fans in baseball, for the best organization in sports. And um, I'm just extremely um, honored to be here. Um, you know, as Mo touched on, uh, this team um, with Shilty and where we're headed and what we've got in, in, the, in, the, in the future that, that this team, um, the potential's there, and I'm just so excited to get to be a part of it. So um, that being said, um, you know, any questions? Um, I'm here to answer them. <laughs> Even though they have an option for next year, was sort of that, as that got closer, were you getting anxious about that? I, obviously, you want to, it sounds like you wanted to be here long term, so was it something you were kind of prodding your agent on? Like, like, 
kind of get this moving? Um, you know, I, I'm not sure if anxious is the word. I just was very clear in in um, my message that this is where I wanted to be. I mean, this is this is obviously um, home for my family and I, my wife and I. Um, but more importantly, I mean, if you if you're a fan of the game and you enjoy playing this game as much as I do, you can't you can't play in a better place than St. Louis, and you can't play in front of a better group of fans. You can't play. Um, for for a better owner who's you know convicted in winning, and for a front office who gives you a chance every year to do that, and um, for a manager who you know can can put all those pieces together and, and go where we want to go, um, it's a no-brainer for me, and and you know I'm thrilled that, to have the opportunity. Hey Matt, you dialed back a few months ago. Did you have the same feeling, or the additions of like Goldschmidt and Miller did that put over the top for you, or not at all? Well, I mean, my. My stance on, on wanting to be here has never changed. Um, you know, obviously adding a guy like Goldie just solidifies the, the message that has always been very clear to me since I was drafted in Saint, by the St. Louis Cardinals is, is there is an expectation to win here. And we want to win every season and we go for it every season. And um, if you want to play this game and you want to play it at a high level, winning is what it's all about. And you can't, you can't ask for a better situation than, than what we have here. And, um, like I said, I, I mean, it, it, for me, it's just a very easy decision. Matt, for you personally, um, can you put into words the idea of in the free agent market, free agent era, where guys are bouncing different teams, that you'll possibly be with one team for your whole career? I mean, it's it's really very humbling. Very, um, you know, it, it's an honor to it's an honor to put this jersey on. I mean, I, I say that, and I say that I don't say that lightly. I, I really mean that, and um, you know, I think about it all the time and to be able to potentially be here for an entire career is something that you know I I don't take for granted Um, every day it's something that I try to live up to and um, you know just it's really I'm at a loss for words it hadn't really sunk in yet Um, you know my my mind is still focused on uh, the LA Dodgers and we got a big game tonight so I'm looking to put this past us and and go out and try to win a game but I couldn't be um, more thrilled for for this opportunity. Bill and Mo could you Maybe elaborate on that because you have the potential now with three guys on this roster who would be lifelong Cardinals in the major leagues with Wainwright and then Yadier and Carpenter are draft guys. How important has that been to you guys? How how much have you learned from maybe guys moving on um, who didn't have a, who didn't leave a legacy? What does this mean to you guys? Yeah, I think that's uh, a key part of what this franchise is all about. It's not about you know, spinning players year to year. And uh, when we get a core player, we like to keep them here. We've made every effort to do that uh, since I've been here and and before. And, you know, the continuity sort of lines up nicely with our fan base, which has great continuity. If you think about it, uh, grandfathers who took their sons to Cardinal games and those sons who brought their sons to Cardinal games have had a continuity of good teams for over 100 years, and, you know, our goal is to keep that legacy alive, and by getting the best players and having them stay here, I think it's a big part of that. Ditto. Um, no, I'm kidding. Um, I, I think, you know, the one thing you have to recognize when you, when you mention people like Wayno, Molina, Carp, there's a reason these, these are people that, that this organization is investing in, because in a lot of ways, they're investing in us. And, and what I mean by that is the, the, the commitment they make not only to our team but to the community and, and, and really to the organization as a whole is something that, that we recognize and, and value. And so as, as we were even starting to compli- comp, uh, contemplate this type of uh, extension, you know, what was driving it is, is certainly performance of what's happening on the field but also the person behind it and, and who's in that uniform. And so, you know, Carp's never said no when we ask him for something. He he always like steps up and, and does things that are beyond just baseball. And you know, hopefully um, that relationship only gets stronger and grows. And and more importantly, the Yachtys, the Waynos, and the Carps of the world, they're mentoring that next generation as well. Matt, is there a ball player from your childhood that was with one team the whole time that you kind of looked up to and admired, and now you get to do the same thing with the Cardinals, possibly play with one team the whole time? I mean. I- I think the, I mean, the name that pops off the, um, right off the top of the list for me would 
be Derek Jeter. I mean, what he was able to accomplish. And by no means am I trying to put my name in the same sentence with with him, but um, that's the simple answer I can give you. Is he's a guy for sure. This might be a question for Shilty. I realize that, but how many more positions will you play during the course of this contract? <laughs> Whatever they tell me to do, I'll do it. But um, you want to answer that? I yeah, I mean, listen, we know that he's a versatile player and he's a guy that we respect a ton. I've had the privilege of knowing Matt since uh, his early days in the start of the organization. And, um, you know, my respect for him is off the charts, obviously, as a player, but. Um, his character is as strong as any character you're going to meet. Um, so I know that's what we're also investing in. He's a, he's a winning player, but he's a winning person. And he's a man that um, I admire and respect a great deal. And to answer your question about the positions, he'll, he's a team guy. He's a 100% team guy. So, um, you know, he'll do what we ask him to do and he'll do it with a great attitude. Right now we're in a great spot because we have continuity um, clearly with, with our infield and look like um, Matt's in a great spot at third base right now. But now you've been able to kind of expand beyond that. Were, were you hopeful that that would be the case? Or were you, when did things kind of allow you to expand? Well, I, I think, you know, coming off of last season, a lot of the, the coaching changes that we made, you know, we had a off-season strategy that was focused on thinking about winning in 2019. Now, we hadn't even started games when we are already started, you know, doing the Goldschmidt extension and the Michaelis extension. And so thinking about where we were going was, is always something that's on our mind. And, and this just compli- or, uh, complements where we are on that. And, and so we're excited that, that Carp will be here for a while. And, and you know, we're always focused on what we're going to look like in out years. Uh, both, really. I, I, I think, you know, it's nice that we have this this depth of, of minor league talent that right now is concentrated at third base. But, you know, CARP has always given us flexibility, so, you know, time will tell. But, you know, these are young players that are they're, they're, they're having, an, an, one of them saying, a really good start to the, this minor league season. And that, that's very encouraging. But... You, you know, when you look at what Carp has accomplished at this level and, and, and what he's meant to this organization, we weren't going to solely just hide behind minor league depth. And, you know, I think we'll have to cross that bridge in terms of where people play and when, when they're ready. There's only one, I mean, and it's it's just the easiest answer for me, and there's only one that, that I care about at all. Um, I have a World Series ring that um, I was graciously given, and but I didn't really feel like I was a part of, um, and there's nothing I want more than that. Um, and it's a big reason why I wanted to be here, because I know that that's coming, and it's coming with this group, and um, it would have broke my heart not to be a part of it, and... I know that um, now I get a chance to do that, and that's the number one thing. The only, the only, the only thing I want to accomplish as a Cardinal um, is winning a World Series. I see how that, how, I mean, you just the, you're just cherished in this town for your life if 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 uh, if you accomplish that goal. And and I've seen it in some of some of my teammates and and guys that I've played with that have left, and um, I want that more than anything. What's this extension mean for the salsa market now? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Um, you know, that's a good question. I haven't thought about it. <laughs> Matt, was there a, knowing that this was cooking, not the salsa, the contract, um, was there a moment on opening day when the fellows came out in the red jackets that you caught yourself thinking, man, if I keep this level of play up, I could be wearing one of those? Um, you know, I, I try not I try hard not to think too much about, um, you know, things that are out of my control or the future. But, um, you know, I'd be lying if I didn't say that that was something that I would be extremely um, just beyond words if it it was something that could be potentially happen, you know, in my career. Um, 
you know, but but my but my sole focus is going out every day and helping us win ball games, and you know, those kind of things will take care of itself. You know, I want more than anything to, like I said, to to put on a World Series ring and and do it here, um, and you know that's the goal. And and I've said it, and I'll say it again. I, I think we're headed in that direction. Mike Gersh, are you available? Okay. Uh, <laughs> do you feel like Matt a little bit is not not a polarizing figure, but but for people who just look at batting average, do you feel like they miss some of the value that he adds? Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think Matt's made a career out of being far more than just batting average. <clears throat> Whether it's his patience or, or power and the flexibility that we've already talked about, um, I think he sort of personifies the, the fact that, you know, there, there's much more to an offensive profile than batting average and there's much more to a player than the, their overall value than, than just their batting average. Well, thank you. Have a good day. Bye.